Today we're going over how to clear a sample for a song or beat if you find yourself wanting to use snippets of songs from other artists in songs of your own. And of course, before we jump in, if you are a musician who's using these samples in songs that you may want to release, well, you found yourself in the right place because here at Ditto Music, you can release unlimited songs worldwide on all the major streaming platforms, and you get to keep 100% of the royalties that you make from your streams and your sales. If you want to give Ditto Music a try, there's going to be a link down in the description below. It's free for 30 days. Check it out and see how you like it. Now, let's dive in. So if you've been planning to sample somebody else's record or a song that's not yours, it's very important that you legally clear this sample so that you can use and release this music out to the world. But first, what classifies as a sample? So a sample can be classified as an element of any pre-existing song being used by another artist in a song of their own. So they don't actually own that music. Essentially, you're taking a clip of audio from somebody else's song and you're putting it in your own song, whether it's the sample just playing out right or you're chopping it up to make it sound a little bit different. One of the biggest recent examples that you can probably think of is Jack Harlow's First Class. This originally sampled Fergie's Glamorous, which came out back in my high school days. Good God, back in my day. <laughs> but it's important not to confuse a sample with an interpolation. An interpolation is where a musician re-records a melody or harmonies from a very popular song instead of just outright taking a sample of that song. And you're mimicking it note for note. So it's exactly the same, only you're the one that's recording it. Now, whether or not you want to sample or use an interpolation is up to you, but each of these have their own requirements for being able to legally use them in your music. So if you do want to use samples and you don't want to find yourself being sued up the wazoo, how do you do that? First of all, I just want to say there are zero loopholes you can do. There is no set time limit as like, oh, if I use 10 seconds of this audio, then I can use the sample. Or if I reverse it backwards and chop it up a certain, then yeah, they're not gonna be able to tell. No, you always have to have permission. Just go check on Vanilla Ice when he released Under Pressure and he didn't get permission from Queen or David Bowie. So to avoid becoming a one hit wonder yourself, <laughs> maybe that was kind of rude. You're gonna to have to acquire two different types of licenses. One is a copyright license for permission to use the master recording, and this is often owned by the artist or the label. And two is a copyright license for permission to use the underlying composition. This is often controlled by the songwriter or the publisher. For a sample, both of these will be legally required. For an interpolation, you'll only need a copyright license for permission to use the underlying composition. And guess what? These people do not have to grant you the rights to use this stuff. So there is a chance that they can say no, and you're just gonna have to deal with that. But you might as well give it a try if you want to. Now, if you do want to, there's gonna be a few steps that you should follow. Step number one is going to be apply for clearance well in advance. The big reason why you want to do this is because this can be a lengthy process in and of itself. And I know how difficult this might be when you're in the throes of creation and you just happen to find a sample that you think this would be so dope to work on this album or in this song. It's hard to get that creative bug out of you, but if you can control it, please. It's going to take a long time for it to be approved to go through all the necessary steps that it needs to go through and you to have all the necessary paperwork, everything that needs to happen, okay? The last thing that you want to do is finish a song you think it's really amazing, but you haven't even gotten permission to use that sample yet. And so you have plans to release the song next month. But guess what? The artist or the, the copyright license holder is going to take a year to give you permission. So it's very important for you to get that process started really early or as early as you possibly can. Step number two is collect info about the song that you're sampling. And what I mean by this is not necessarily to collect info about the song, but gather the information about how you plan on using the song. So what percentage of the song are you going to use and how are you going to use it in your music? How long is the sample? How many times is it going to be featured in your song? Which parts of the song you're sampling and what your plans for the song are in general? And you might think to yourself, well, why do I need to give them all this information? You know, why can't they just say yes or no and let me use the sample? Because think of it, if you're an artist and somebody comes to you that you don't know and you've never heard of in your life and they ask you to use a piece of your music in music of their own, Yes, of course, money's going to be one of the big factors that determines you licensing this song out to other people because you wanna make money residually off of that song, right? But you're also going to have to think about the fact that 
These people are gonna use your song in a certain way or be talking about certain things within that song maybe that you don't agree with. Maybe it's being used in a way that you are not necessarily satisfied with and you feel like it's going to kind of take down the value of your song. It's gonna make your song feel cheap. So it's important to have this information put together before you approach the person that you wanna to ask to use their sample. Step number three is identify the master recording rights holder. Now again, this will be either the label, the artist, or another third party associated. Finding this information can be as quick as a Google search or searching through different Wikipedia pages. If these two places don't work, you can also try going through the liner notes on Spotify and see who the master recording rights holder may be there. If you happen to see one name that continually repeats because I would use multiple resources, then the chances are that person has something to do with the master recording rights, right? That's my, that's what I would think. And if not, you know, they'll just block your number anyway and then you can just keep on about your day. It's not a big deal. Step number four is identify the publishing rights holder. Now here is where you can use PROs to your advantage because these have big, huge databases for you to search and get this information on specifically. The thing is you have to be a part of one yourself in order to get access. So in the US, there's ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, Harry Fox, and I think those are the, the main ones in the US. In Canada, you have SOCAN, S-O-C-A-N, and in the UK, it's PRS. Now, luckily, Ditto Music Publishing can sign you up on your behalf so that you can get access to these databases and records that you can sort through since it's only available to society members. Otherwise, if you don't join one of these PROs and you don't have access to these databases, you can use Google once again to get the information that you need. However, it can be a little bit tricky to get this information online. Now, finally, step number five is to contact the rights owner and then negotiate your price. Now, once you've gotten all the information that you needed on contacting these different people and also the information on how you plan on using their song in a song of your own, this is where you can start to negotiate, you know, prices for whatever you're trying to do with their music. Most of the time, they're going to ask you to pay an advance fee up front, so kind of like a clearance fee. And this price depends on the person and, you know, how they feel about sampling their music to someone. Uh, so it could be between a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. You have to be prepared. Because if you ain't got it, you might want to go home and start selling lemonade on the corner. <laughs> That's not gonna get you nowhere, don't do that. And of course, if they're smart, at least this is what I would do, they're gonna ask for a percentage of every single sale and stream that you make. Whatever the percentage is, you know, there is no set number, it's just whatever you guys agree on. Now I will say the percentage can also depend on how recognizable the sample is, how much of the sample is featured in your song, whether or not instruments or vocals or both are featured in that sample. A lot of these things can reflect in the price. So think about that when you're approaching these artists. Now, in addition to this, we all know that the corporation, the record labels are always gonna want their piece of the pie too. So they're gonna stick their crusty duster hands in there as well. They may request an upfront fee also for them. They may request a rollover fee, which is a royalty rate calculated based on the sales that are generated from this song. Now we all know what's gonna happen if both rights holders say, no, you can't use this. Then that just means you can't use it. But what happens if one rights holder says you can't use it? Are you still allowed? No, you can't use it. You need to have everybody on board with this sample before you can even think about putting it on your album or putting it in your songs. And if you use it, even though they said no, just remember, ice, ice, baby. Doom, 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 ba -da -doom, doom. And you will never have another lick of success after that because you will be going to the bank trying to get some money to pay these people back because they sued the mess out of you, all right? We'll be on the next episode of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. So however you choose to sample your songs or interpolate your songs, one thing is for sure, you're always going to need permission. So thank you for watching today's video about how to legally clear samples in 2023 for your beats and your songs. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like down below. Leave a comment also if you have any questions on the sampling process or even comments about Ditto Music Publishing and how that can help you in your music career. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this coming in the future. I am legend and stay legendary. I'm out. Ice, ice, baby. Ding, 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 ding.